That's why Paul at one point, Paul says in scripture, he says something amazing. He said, he said, pray for me because a great and effective door has opened before me. Hallelujah. We like that, right? But then he says, and there are many who oppose me. Hmm. God opened the door. God opened the door and there are Right where he opened the door, there is opposition where he opened the door, which means if you make a decision based on the opposition, you are going to miss the door that God put before you. And, God, and Paul realized in order to take advantage of the door, if I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity, I've got to trust God with the opposition. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God uses trouble as an agent of change. And so now David, he's playing his harp before Saul. And just like that, he goes from the fields into the palace. And he becomes Saul's personal armor bearer. He's now in the same room with the crown. A moment ago, he was playing for his sheep. And now he's in the same room with the crown. And you know what was going through David's mind. This is the same thing that's going through your mind. It's happening. It's happening. Woo! God is moving in my life. He's opened the doors. You know, he's thinking, look, it's happening. The promise is true. The prophecy is taking place. It's manifesting itself. The prophecy is coming true. The crown has never been near. And then, after, even, even after that, the Bible says after he encounters Goliath, he's put as captain. He, ro- he rises in the ranks of Saul's army. He's put as captain in front of all the armies of Israel. And I'm, and, and I'm sure he's thinking it's manifesting in itself. The anointing for which he has been called is revealing itself. Things are progressing, things are happening, things are going good until one day. The Bible says that while they were coming back from the battle, they were coming through a town, and the town's women were there to greet them. And the Bible says they were singing and dancing, and they were singing a song, and they said, Saul has slain his thousands. And Saul said, Amen. (laughs) And then they said the line that changed David's life. 
They said, and David his tens of thousands. And it would be a man. Ordinarily, you would think it's favor. But all of a sudden, with that one line, the Bible says Saul hears it. And it caught his attention. And he remembers what he was sensing about the shift. And he looks at David and he says to himself, what more can he have except my kingdom? And just like that, everything changes. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but somebody has been in a place where it felt like everything was happening. Everything was going good. Then all of a sudden, everything changed. Everything shifted. The people who were for you are not for you anymore. The people who loved you are now your enemy. And the Bible says all of a sudden this shift happened. And the Bible says, it, 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 long story short, David is now running for his life. He's running for his, and see, that's the problem. That's the trouble with favor. And I said that, I said to the earlier service, I said that's the sermon all by itself right there. I said that's a good sermon type of the trouble with favor. Because the same favor that will attract the blessing will also attract trouble. And more often than not, the favor will attract trouble before it attracts the blessing. And that's why sometimes favor does not look like favor when it first comes into your life. I'm sure while he was being pursued by Saul, David did not feel favored. He felt cursed. <laughs> But he was favored and what he didn't really understand is that the same favor that will attract the blessing will also attract trouble. That the source of his pain was also the source of his crown. And that's somebody's prophecy right there. That, that the source of your pain is also the source of your crown. The source of... The, 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 the area of your struggle, the area of your pain, the area of your tears is some, many times also the area of your ministry. That you cannot really separate the two. They, 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 they go hand in hand. And you can't have one without the other. And this is why Paul... Paul, the Bible says, he, he, he explains in 2 Corinthians 12, he said that, 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 that with the abundance of the revelations that were given to him, were also given to him a thorn in his flesh. And the Bible, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't come to describe or tell us or reveal what that thorn is. And I'm sort of glad because it allows me to put myself into the equation. He didn't tell you what your thorn is, but he says, I prayed and pleaded three times that the Lord would take it away, that he would take this thorn away from me. And God's, all God replied is, my grace is sufficient for you, and my power is made perfect in weakness. In other words, Paul, the revelations that are at the heart of your ministry. And there is no one who revealed Christ like Paul revealed him. Three quarters of the New Testament are taken up by Paul. I find it remarkable that Paul, who, who is the apostle that never walked with Jesus while he was on this earth, was the, revealed him at a greater level than the actual apostles that were with him. The revelations that were at the heart of his ministry. You cannot divorce the thorn from the revelation. They come together. The thorn is a, pro is a product of the revelation itself. Just as a smoke is a bright product of fire, you cannot separate the two, two from one another. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That one will produce the other. You will attract trouble. With, your favor will always attract trouble. Your revelation will always attract trouble. He said, if I remove the thorn, the revelation goes with it. I can't take the two. He said, but my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, my grace is greater than the thorn. 
And if he would just learn to lean and trust in my grace, you can't avoid the thorn, but I'll cause you to overcome the thorn. The thorn will remain, but the thorn, it won't have power over your life. The pain won't have power over your life. The rejection won't have power over your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? If you just trust in my grace, my grace is greater than the trouble. My grace is greater than the storm. You can't avoid the storms. But if you would just trust in my grace, you can do what Jesus did in the storm. You can, you can rest in the storm. Not my God, how you hear what I'm saying? You can rest in the middle of the storm. So while everybody else is going crazy and crying and shouting, all of us, Jesus was in the back of the boat, asleep, resting in the storm. My God, it shows me that rest in peace is not circumstantial. It's about trusting in your father he was resting in his father and god says if you would just if you would just just trust and rest in me in the storm you can't avoid the storm jesus could not avoid the storm if jesus could not avoid the storm what makes you think that you're going to avoid the storm the storm is not about a lack of anointing the storm is going to come if you want to do anything worthwhile if you want to do anything that, 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 that matters, you are going to go through the storm. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? If you don't want trouble, don't do anything. And you can avoid trouble very easily. God, can, 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 I, can, I, can I get into this? That the Bible talks about how, remember when, 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 when Peter and the disciples were in the boat? And the Bible says there was a storm. And the Bible says while the storm was happening, it says the winds were against it. But, 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 but at one point, the Bible, says, the, the Bible says when Peter stepped out of the boat and he began to walk, it says he suddenly saw the winds and became afraid. And I said, he just noticed that there was And I realized the winds didn't matter. As long as you are in the boat. If you're in the safety of the boat, if you're not going to step out into your calling, if you're not going to step out into your ministry, if you're not going to step out, you, you, the wind doesn't matter. But the moment you step out, all of a sudden things that you, you're, you, you're, you're buffeted by trouble that always existed. It just, you didn't have to face the trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? <sighs> Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? My God, I feel like I'm speaking to somebody. I don't know who it is, but my spirit is stirring up. Isn't, isn't it interesting? God, God, I love what God tells Joshua before he enters the promised land. He said, be strong and very courageous for you're about to step into the promise. I said, you would think, hallelujah, praise God. But God knows you're not going to step into the promise without a fight. You're not going to step in the promise without facing stuff. So if you want the promise, you better strengthen yourself. You better be bold because the promise of God is not for wimps. The promise of God are for fighters. The promise of God, are, he said, be strong and courageous because I'm about to manifest my promise in your life and you have to be able to handle it. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Whew. Am I scaring somebody? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Hallelujah. 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 You can't avoid the storm. But God said, if you just rest and trust in me, I will cause the storm that, was these, that the enemy conjured up to sink you and I will cause it to instead push you into the place I'm taking you into. I will use the storm that the enemy designed to push you away from your crown to push you towards your crown. 
If you just rest and trust in me, I'll get you there. And if you just, you, but you have to rest in the storm. Trust me in the storm. And if you can trust me in the storm, I will use the storm. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Then move you towards your crown. Second Corinthians 4 says, we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. I always wondered at that scripture. It's one of those scriptures, you know, you pass over and you, you try to avoid. It doesn't sound pleasant. <laughs> Does it, at first to me, it doesn't sound like a testimony until you've been there. I, I don't know who this is for, but is, anybody who can, is there anybody who can relate to Paul? You are pressed. You're pressed on every side. You're pressed relationally. You're pressed financially. You're pressed in your thoughts. Pressed in your mind. Pressed in your faith. You are pressed, but somehow, somehow you are pressed, but you are not crushed. God said, God said uh, that, that no matter how heavy the pressure feels, no matter how heavy the pressure gets, I won't allow the pressure to crush you. I want, no matter how pressed you are, I won't let the pressure crush you. But rather, if you can trust me in the, pr the pressure, if you can trust me in the pressure, sometimes God doesn't deliver you out of the pressure. He delivers you in the pressure. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Isn't that what he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? He didn't deliver them from the furnace. He delivered them in the furnace. So the Bible says that he, they put the king put them in the furnace. And all of a sudden they put him in the furnace. And then the king says, I see another person in there. Did I just put three people in there? I see a fourth. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. And the Bible says they were walking around. In the furnace. They were not trying to crawl and escape. They were walking around in the furnace. Because sometimes God doesn't deliver you from it. He delivers you in it. He empowers you to walk in it. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And the Bible says they walked out. And not the smell of the smoke was on them. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God said if you can trust me in the pressure. It's easy to trust him to get out of the pressure. But can you trust him in the pressure? He said, if you can trust me in it, I won't allow, I won't allow the pressure to crush you. But instead, I'll use the pressure to propel you forward into the place where you're, I'm taking you. I'll cause the pressure to propel you forward to the crown I have for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You see... He said, well, what does that have to do with David? Well, David was not in Ziklag by choice. It was the pressure that drove him to Ziklag. And it's interesting. I looked up. I was trying to understand what the, the, the name Ziklag means. And I tried to look on my, I have a little PC study Bible, and it, it didn't tell me much. It's, it was a bit vague, so I went to the Hebrew scholars, and the Hebrew scholars were, were saying that part of the name, the, the part of the name, Ziklag, means the place of pressure. The place of pressure. Pressure drove him. The life drove him to the, 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 to the place of pressure, to Ziklag. To Ziklag, and the crown came to him in Ziklag. The pressure drove him there. He was not there by choice. The pressure drove him to Ziklag. And you see, Ziklag was not even in Israel. Ziklag was, in, was actually Philistine territory. And I have to, and I can only imagine what David must have been feeling. How far away he felt from the promise of God in his life. How far away he felt from his purpose. How far away he felt from the crown. But little did he know that the very pressure that he thought was driving him away from the crown was actually driving him towards the crown and closer to the crown because the crown would come to him 
and in Ziklag. And it occurs to me that while David was in the palace, when he seemed the closest to the crown, he was actually the furthest from the crown. And when he seemed the furthest from the crown, he was actually the closest to the crown. See, and I want to talk to people who feel you feel far away. You feel far away. Far away from his promise. Far away from where you feel you should be. Far away from 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 what you feel you who you should be you feel far you never thought you would be where you are today you're wondering how ziklag happened ziklag was not on the map when you were starting off the journey and somehow this and that happened and you found yourself in Ziklag and now you feel so far away from where you thought you should be. But I hear God saying to somebody in this place, you're closer than you know. You're closer than you know. Because the crown is coming to Ziklag. And the Bible says the Amalekites raided Ziklag and they burned it to the ground. Imagine he fled to Ziklag. Tried to make the best of a bad situation. Tried to make something happen. Wasn't what he planned. But he made a home in Ziklag. And now even Ziklag is gone. I, I, I don't know who, you, 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 it wasn't what you planned. You were in this place. You tried to make things happen. And now... Even here, things are going wrong. And there's so much in here that I'm not going to talk about today that we're going to get into as, as, as we go on. But the Bible says that he, that, that, that he recovers the fa his family, he recovers the possessions. But what I found interesting, what I find interesting in this is that he returns to Ziklag. And I wondered to myself, why return to Ziklag? There's nothing left. There's nothing left in Ziglag. Why, why would you return to Ziglag? Why don't you make your home somewhere else? You got your stuff back. Why would you return? Ziglag is ashes. But what I would suggest to you that it was an act of trust. It was David's way of saying, I trust you with Ziglag. I trust that you can even do something with, with the ashes in my life. I trust, I don't only trust you with my stuff. I don't only trust you with my possessions. I trust you with the ashes. I trust that you can even bring something out of this. And the Bible says, he remained two days in Ziklag. And he was sitting upon the remnants of Ziklag sitting in the ashes two days he was there and the Bible says that all of a sudden a man comes to him the man comes to him but he's holding something and he looks and the man is holding the crown. And the man puts it, lays it at the feet of David, lays it in the ashes of Ziklag. I wonder what was going through David's mind when he looked <laughs> at the crown. I wonder who's saying, I, what is this? Don't tell me. How did the crowd 
find me in Ziklag. But I'm here to tell you that when it's time for the crown to come, the crown will find you wherever you are. The crown will find you in Ziklag. Maybe you can't find it, but it will find you. I, I wonder what was going through his mind. He said, I never imagined that I would see the crown in this place. I, after all of this time, after all of these years, after all of these pursuits, I never imagined this would be the place, this would be the moment. I wasn't even going to come back. There was nothing, I don't even know why I'm here. But the crown came to me in the ashes of Ziklag. And I don't know who I'm here to speak to. But maybe you're not holding physical ashes, but you have the ashes. But you're sitting in the ashes of dreams, in the ashes of vision, in the ashes of hope. And it, it, is, it has come to the point where there is nothing left. It is almost at an unrecoverable stage. But we serve a God who calls the things that are not as though they were. I don't know who this is for, but God said, if you can trust me with your ashes... I will cause the crown to come out of your ashes. And Isaiah says that God would give a crown of beauty instead of ashes. I know you never thought anything could come out of the ashes, but God will cause the beauty of the crown to come out of your ashes. God will resurrect the crown, forge the crown out of the ashes of your ziklag. I don't know where your ziklag is. I don't know what your ziklag, I don't know the name of your ziklag. I don't know where the ziklag is for you. But God said, if you can trust me with the ashes of ziklag, God said, I'll cause the crown to come out of your ziklag. The crown is coming. The crown is coming. The crown is coming. Ah, the crown is coming. I know, I know, I know you thought that you were so far away, but the crown is coming. The crown has found you. The crown has struck you down. And if you can trust God and just remain just a little while longer, I know there's not much to look at, but the crowd is coming to your ziklag.